Alrighty, it's the first official episode of Drawn Out, uh, the series where I am I'm illustrating and recording myself doing it. Uh, these are really exciting, um, so I, I'm super excited. You guys seem to like it the first time with my little pilot episode, so we're, we're really going forward with this. Uh, th these are so much fun to me. They don't get a ton of views, but I like them, so who cares? <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, tons of fun stuff. Okay, also, by the way, I wanted to mention that these aren't always going to be redesigns, uh, and they're not always going to be Ruby either. So it's kind of whatever I want to do, which will tend to be redesigning characters and Ruby. <laughs> but but don't be surprised if if that's not that's not what's happening um, every now and then. So yeah, we're doing CL this time. Uh, I really like Seal's character. She's, like, she has so little screen time, but she was a fun, like, companion to Penny. I'm sad that she's not in volume, like, volume 8 or 7. Uh, so this is kind of what this is, is what I would think she would look like if she did show up. Um, so yeah, uh, also let me know if this is too fast or too slow. I'm at 500 speed here, so... Uh, it's it's a shorter video than the first one, even though I'm drawing half as many characters. Because <laughs> I, I made it faster than last time. Uh, you also, I clear, so I struggled a lot with drawing CL's uh, arm. Uh, you probably noticed that. I, I don't know what, it was just not working out. I, I was just really struggling with proportions and anatomy. And it doesn't help that I was kind of fighting my computer because this is a really big canvas I'm working on this time and that plus having my art tablet plugged in plus recording the screen it was just a lot for 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 the computer to handle so it was chugging and and kind of freezing a lot so that was kind of a constant battle I had to fight for this redesign uh, but yeah, so I wanted CL to look more militaristic. Uh, she's like part of Ironwood's kind of team. The fact that they would trust her to be with Penny um, and, and that she is so uh, like, like <laughs> willing to follow the rules, like she's really strict, uh, made me assume that she would stick with Ironwood and maybe eventually one day join the Aesops. So that was kind of the direction I wanted to go with her. Uh, for the jacket specifically, I looked up old school anime jackets, so like uh, Makoto Kusanagi from Ghost in the Shell, and the uh, the, the woman I don't know her name from Evangelion. <laughs> She's got the red jacket, uh, and so I I took cues from them, like that popped collar and the shorter sleeves, uh, and it's just because I wanted her to look kind of retro. Uh, I felt like that would help her look more distinct from, like, from the other members of the Athlesian kind of factions. Uh, it would also help her look good next to Penny, uh, with Penny's sort of country bumpkin kind of vibe, plus this, like, 80s retro, uh, that I just felt like a, a great combo. Uh, so yeah, uh, and I went with the shorts because like I said, I wanted her to look more militaristic, um, and the shorts felt more combat ready and more like she was properly following a uniform than the skirt. But I didn't want to lose that the, the silhouette that the skirt gave her, which is why she's got kind of the belled out shorts. Uh, it's kind of a lot going on in her torso with the buttons and the zipper. But I, I figured it was all right because everywhere else was more simple, you know, like there's not a ton going on uh, texture wise in the arms or the legs. So having kind of an, a central area of busyness, I, I, I figured it worked there. Ooh, nice long pause. I want take a shot every time I have a nice long pause. It'll be really great. <laughs> Um, so, fun fact, uh, the best way to draw shoes 
is to just have a reference. You probably noticed the dress shoes that I had with CL in my little reference uh, picture. If it hasn't shown up yet, or you didn't notice it yet, it'll show up again once I start coloring. Um, yeah, just just have a reference of a shoe. It, it, it'll help. It'll save your life, I promise. Because <laughs> I used to just draw, like, potatoes for shoes. <laughs> I, I knew how to draw potatoes and converse, and that's it. Um, and the thing that I most regularly actually pull references for are shoes. Uh, it really helps. Adding details to shoes, even minor ones, can kind of really help pull, pull everything together. It's a bit like actually drawing fingers and not sort of bubbly finger ideas <laughs> on your characters. Uh, the little details is where your your art will really come to life, you know? On the topic of, I guess, the fashion of this design, I want to mention how to use short jackets efficiently. <laughs> so, because if you pay attention, you'll notice that CL, I've given her kind of a cropped jacket. It doesn't go all the way down to her waist. Um, and the important thing to keep in mind if you're going to do that is to have the shirt underneath the jacket not be the same size. <laughs> um, it's kind of like how Nora's current look, like the jacket and her dress are the, that she's got. Like she's got a jacket and a dress and they're the exact same length and it ends up looking really weird. So if you're gonna have a short jacket, either give a character a long shirt underneath it or an even more cropped top like like a tube top works well in that situation i'm doubling up on that idea with cl because you'll notice that so i've got the turtleneck um shorter shirt underneath and then underneath all of that i've given her like thermal long john kind of a thing you'll see it better once it's in color <laughs> um it just helps break up like the points of interest more. If everything stops at the same place in a design, it just looks kind of, kind of flat and uninteresting. Much like how values in your colors can create a good amount of visual interest. Uh, val like the same thing applies to length of things in in the the clothes. You just, just like how you don't want socks and boots to be the exact same length kind of a thing. Uh, you want there to be variety there, so, so that there's levels to look at. Just a, a long-winded fashion tip there. So this blue, this shade of blue, is the same shade that I, I pulled it off of Ironwood. Uh, and it's the same one that is on Winter and the Aesops. And it's because I wanted CL to look more like she is part of the, the military. And that seems to be the, the military uniform color now, <laughs> is uh, this, this sort of deep blue. Which, yeah, I really liked the lighter blue that CL originally had, but, and I was worried that this darker blue was gonna, like, look too similar to her hair color. I thought it was gonna kinda look odd with the beret. And it didn't! It looks great! So that's exciting. So that's another thing. Don't be afraid to experiment with established character colors. Um, sometimes it can it can be a great way to, to enhance a, a design, especially if the implication is a time jump, like how I'm doing with CL here. Uh, this is not just a different outfit, necessarily. It's time has passed. So it's okay that she's wearing, like, still her established color. Her color is blue. Um, but just changing the shade of it can sometimes be a good thing. Not always. <laughs> I feel like a different shade of yellow, or, or rather, like a different shade of red on Ruby would be kind of weird. <laughs> um, but yeah, as always, never be afraid to experiment with your art. Uh, you'll notice that I tend to do colors in chunks. Like I did all the blue and then I did all the white. What I'm doing there is I'm putting down the colors that I know that I want. Uh, I, I, I work that way and have what I'm confident with first. And then from there, I piece out 
the the things I I haven't figured out yet. For example, I didn't really know what to do with her belt um, and like the watch, and I was worried that that would be too much black. So I saved that for last. I was waiting to do things like her sleeves and her belt and the the tips of her shoes until I figured out how to. Uh, place the colors properly and efficiently because at first like if you look at the the designs for the reference of the shoes that I've got it's all black it's black and white shoes and that was originally what I was gonna do but because I was putting down what I had confidently placed already I realized that this blue was like it's a really punchy blue it's uh, it's loud and I, I noticed that it was all really up high and so what was originally gonna be a just black and white shoe uh, I wanted to change the black to that blue color to help kind of round out where that color went on the design the design I do that so often I'll say that with the description uh, as well if I if you hear me say the description I usually stutter my way through it also I hope you enjoyed that little pop in of shading because I forgot to record a section of it <laughs> I was so caught up I get I save my art the least frequently when I'm coloring and shading because it's it's when I start having the most fun and I really get into the zone um, so yeah, uh, wow, another nice long pause. <laughs> I really do appreciate um, like the advice people are suggesting. I'm getting a lot of the same comments, <laughs> but I appreciate uh, the the thought. Uh, I do. Don't ever be if you ever want to draw anything I design. Absolutely, feel free to, to tweet it at me or don't. You don't have to if you don't want to. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's tons of fun seeing different people's interpretation of a character design. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun getting to see the variety people can come up with. So I'm doing shading differently this time than I did last time. Uh, this is cell shading. Uh, I'm also doing lazy cell shading because it's just a layer of black with the opacity brought down. <laughs> um, it's a fast efficient way to shade things uh, and with how overheated my computer was getting, this felt like the the best way. And I didn't really need to do traditional cell shading, which is picking each color individually and getting a shading color for it. Like a darker color for the skin, a darker color for the hair. You need to do that for every color on a design. Um, and I didn't want to spend too much time with my computer just really chugging like how it was. The, I've got softer lighting on the blue just because it was a lot of like that really stark blue and I wanted to help give it some volume by, by giving it a light shine. I did that instead of the hard shine like how I do on the hair because I didn't want it to look like reflective. Paying attention to how light refracts off of things can help convey texture really well. Uh, another simple design, or yeah, well, another simple background for this one. Uh, I'm, I pulled out really far to do it. <laughs> um, and yeah, there we have it. It's CL. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I really like how this design turned out. Let me know if you like it. And thank you to all the patrons. Hopefully this video was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm excited to become more confident making these as we progress.